amber hunters probe the depths of a treacherous cave for clues to the secret of life. To the ancients, the world's first precious gem had the power of magic. It helped us understand the evolution of life. By preserving living things millions of years old, gift of nature that forms a window to our past. Amber, the trap of time. Islands of the Dominican Republic. These men go in search of one of the Earth's few organic gems. Gems created 30 million years ago, the rarest of which carry a treasure within a treasure. To find what they are looking for, they have to burrow deep into the Earth. Buried in these walls may be the one gem in the world that's priceless. What makes it exceptional is what it contains. Trapped in amber is a snapshot of the history of life. Insects and plants frozen in time millions of years ago. The origins of this strange light and translucent material has been a mystery for ages. 30 million years ago, a large part of our planet was covered in lush tropical forest. Certain species of evergreens produced a sticky sap which oozed from places where their bark was damaged or branches broken. This resin, containing acids and other chemicals, sometimes flowed from the trees in large quantities. These trees are bleeding in a way, and they do this to protect the wild, not that the fungi get in. So it is kind of, of keeping the tree itself, the tree healthy. Certain chemicals in the resin also repelled insects. But then, some of these insects learned to recognize that the scent of the resin meant either food or a safe breeding ground. Over time, the forest died. Trees fell and decayed, and the resin was buried under tons of sediment. There it oxidized and turned into a solid. Amber has been found in some 20 locations around the world, in a variety of subtle hues from honey to brown. The darker the color, the greater the exposure to weathering or sunlight. Red is caused by oxidation. Blue is the rarest, the result of mineral or other organic stains in the resin. It fluoresces under ultraviolet light. Amber's warm and mysterious glow was first treasured in prehistoric Europe. The Baltic coast, along what's now Poland, has been known as a source of amber for over 10,000 years. Rooted in superstition and the belief that natural objects contained magical powers, early Europeans revered amber for its ability to ward off evil spirits. Used as incense, it gives off the fragrant scent of pine when burned. When rubbed vigorously, it produces a static electric charge, which can pick up light objects. The word electricity comes from electron, the Greek name for amber. Today, 
on the shores of the Baltic Sea, amber is still found, as it has been for thousands of years. Large deposits lie submerged under the sea. During winter storms, the amber is loosened from the sea floor and washed up on the shore. On a good day, large quantities can be fished from the waves in nets. The amber collected is mostly fashioned into gems and sold as jewelry. But to a scientist, the rarest and most intriguing is a gem bearing a treasure from the distant past. The American Museum of Natural History in New York City boasts one of the finest collections of amber in the world. But here, amber is not prized for its color or beauty. For entomologist David Grimaldi, an insect captured in amber is a unique time capsule of prehistoric life. The main virtue of fossils in amber, all sorts of inclusions like insects and other things, is their absolutely exquisite preservation. It's, it's a preservation unlike any other kind of fossil. Um, whereas most fossils preserved in rock are mineral replacements of the original substance, a bone or a tissue, um, what you see in amber is virtually the original material, uh, the original tissues and muscles inside these tiny insects. Uh, they're exquisite little mummies. The reason why amber preserves insects and other organisms with such fidelity is because of its chemistry. Imagine a resin flowing out of a tree and an insect adheres, sticks to this resin, and then gradually it's engulfed by this flowing mass of resin. It dies very, very quickly. Within seconds or minutes, these um, alcohols and other kinds of liquids seep into the body, drive out the water, essentially dehydrate it. They actually embalm the tissues, and, um, and then the, the resin starts to harden. And as it hardens, it actually encapsulates uh, the, whole, the whole scene. Insects. They are among the oldest and most successful life forms on Earth. They are the largest and most diverse class in the animal kingdom. Twenty-five percent of all the insects described form part of a highly diverse group known as the parasitic wasps. One group of these wasps is known to have existed over 200 million years ago. For curator and entomologist Case van Achterberg, parasitic wasps are the champions of evolution. Parasitic wasps are a very old group. Partly you can infer that already from the diversity. The diversity is enormous, but we have little proof about the age except the diversity and, and the complexity. You can't, you can't imagine that complexity just developed just in a few years or million years or maybe 50 million years. That, that must be a much longer period. And one of the few proofs we have are the fossils. So there are a little bit of fossils that uh, just uh, our impressions of wings, wing patterns that became uh, fossilized later. Of the two million species of parasitic wasps thought to exist, Van Achterberg discovered one in Australia that puzzled him. He could not link it to any other type he knew. For someone who's interested in the evolution of insects, the greatest radiations of life on Earth, there is no preserver, no archive of ancient insects like there is amber. I study insects fossilized in rocks, and sometimes the best you can get is, is, is a vague imprint, a vague image. Uh, insects in amber are just exquisitely preserved. It helps me make much, much more accurate inferences about their evolution. The best amber fossils in the world come from an island in the Caribbean. The Dominican Republic is the oldest known source of amber in the Western Hemisphere.
The famous Latoka mines were dug by hand, some up to 200 feet deep. The walls are composed of sandstone, which can collapse without warning. To guard against a cave-in and protect the amber from shattering, digging is done with a hammer and chisel. Dominican amber has been studied it's only within the last 20 to 30 years. It's renowned for the quality of the amber. It's slightly softer than Baltic amber, but it's very, very clear. It has great clarity. There's some beautiful colors. There's some beautiful blues, reds, yellows. I think really the main virtue of Dominican amber are the quality and the variety of inclusions. There's some really stunning and very impressive organisms preserved in Dominican amber, uh, including small vertebrates like little lizards and frogs, and some beautiful plants, and leaves and flowers, of course, large insects as well. Unlike Baltic amber, which is polished by the sea. Dominican amber comes with a gray crust that's only removed through buffing on a power-driven wheel. Once cleaned, the amber can be sorted and appraised. Most will be made into jewelry, but pieces with rare and unusual inclusions will be saved for collectors and freelance amber hunters shopping for museums. Sorting through specimens of amber many millions of years old, David Grimaldi sometimes finds an insect or other life form that gives a new and often stunning insight into the workings of evolution. In a piece of Dominican amber, Grimaldi found an insect he thought might be a parasitic wasp, but of the sort he had never seen before. This piece of Dominican amber might hold locked in its core the answer to an evolutionary puzzle. Grimaldi decided to send the piece to his colleague entomologist, Kees van Ochterberg in the Netherlands, for an expert evaluation. Van Ochterberg opened the box with great interest, and the first piece he examined was Grimaldi's parasitic wasp. What he saw was an enormous surprise. It was clearly an extremely close relative of the Australian parasitic wasp that he had discovered earlier. But this one was trapped in ancient amber and found on the other side of the world. That's amazing because that's uh, more than probably 18, maybe 90 million years ago. We have exactly the same Specimens. It is, it is in other species, but it's so close that now you can see it at glance, at one glance, this is exactly the same. Science's interest in amber has fueled a brisk trade in fake amber, upping its value. This cricket, embedded in a block of polyester resin, was offered for sale for $5,000. On the black market, prices are twice as high. But the most lucrative amber forgeries contain vertebrates, usually frogs or lizards. If this piece were real, it would be worth $35,000. There are several ways of scientifically investigating whether amber is genuine or not. With the help of a refractometer, the way in which a light beam is bent inside an object can be measured. 
This reading shows a number higher than 1.5, too high for amber. It's more likely a piece of glass. In some cases, the material is amber, but it has been melted to improve its looks. Here, I have a piece of clarified amber. Very interesting of this amber is that it contains pseudo-inclusions, inclusions which are really not inclusions, but have formed uh, during solidification of the amber after the, let's say, the heating process. So bad quality amber can be um, uh, made much better and um, these kind of uh, products can be the result and they bring up a much better price. Amber's authenticity can also be checked by measuring its density. First the gemstone is weighed. 1,250 milligrams in this case. Then the gemstone is immersed in water, where it will lose weight equal to the weight of water it displaces, the Archimedes principle. 4.53 carats, or 906 milligrams, a difference of 344 milligrams. Its weight in air divided by that difference gives a density of 3.6. Real amber has a density of 1.1. It floats in salt water. This is a simple, yet a very reliable test. Water in a 10% salt solution, slightly stronger than seawater, makes amber float easily on the surface. While objects with a higher density like this fake amber, made of plastic or polyester, don't. Amber from the Dominican Republic, or the Baltic, was formed 30 to 40 million years ago. But much older amber can also be found. In New Jersey, on the northeast coast of the United States, rich deposits are found from the Cretaceous period, 65 to 140 million years ago. One of the most interesting chapters in the biological history of the Earth the age which saw the extinction of the dinosaurs. About five years ago, several private collectors who are renowned fossil collectors working in the Cretaceous sediments of New Jersey came to me and uh, with the discovery of a, of a wonderful, incredibly rich deposit. And it's been, a, uh, it, it's been an exciting uh, series of excavations ever since. The true resinous Cretaceous amber from New Jersey is clear red to yellow. In some deposits, 70% of the material is turbid, clouded with bubbles and particles of debris swept off the bark as the debris streamed down the tree trunk. These are small pieces of clear New Jersey amber, which is 90 to 95 million years old. And uh, I'm screening through it to find uh, inclusions of insects and other tiny organisms in these pieces. The Cretaceous ambers are the ambers that contain the oldest insects and other organisms in them. And uh, that's a particularly interesting period to biologists and paleontologists in particular because it's in the middle of the Cretaceous that you get the explosive radiation, you know, this burgeoning evolution of the flowering plants, the angiosperms. Today, insects and flowering plants are supreme rulers on land. They make up over three quarters of all life forms. Without them, the world would be unrecognizable. Most biologists believe 
that the evolution of flowering plants and insects closely affected each other, starting in the Cretaceous period. The amber from New Jersey is turning out to be the most diverse site in the world for the Cretaceous period for amber. There are other fossils at this site as well, not just fossils in amber, but they're fossils preserved in the clays. And when you put it all together, it is one of the most complete pictures that we have of a biological community from the Cretaceous period. Insects and plants fossilized in amber enabled scientists to reconstruct an ancient forest dating back a hundred million years. Moreover, Grimaldi and his colleagues were among the first to extract DNA from an ancient insect. Amber is turning out to be the only substance which preserves DNA that's millions of years old. And it's as a result of this DNA in amber that we can directly measure the amount of genetic change that's taken place over millions of years. Found buried deep in the cells of every living thing lies DNA, the molecule of life. The multitude of living forms with which we share our rich and beautiful world strikes us with its amazing and incredible diversity. DNA contains the coded instructions for how to make that living being. To a biologist interested in evolution, DNA is so important because it offers a unique chance of being able to reconstruct the evolutionary history of a particular organism. In effect, measure the rate of evolution and track its effects over time. Amber's unique properties preserved ancient life so remarkably well that the DNA, the coded instructions for how to make such a creature, was able to be extracted. This achievement stirred the imagination and raised an intriguing possibility. Could scientists clone a dinosaur? When 90 million year old amber was discovered in New Jersey in 1991, the film Jurassic Park was brought closer to home. Jurassic Park did more to popularize amber, at least in North America, than anything. And I think that our work on ancient DNA from amber, um, that's one of the first questions we get. Are you going to have Jurassic Park? And of course we always answer, no. The reason being, first of all, the DNA is very, very fragmentary. Um, I've, I've often analogized the task of trying to resurrect an organism from this very fragmentary DNA in amber to sort of like, without ever having read Tolstoy's War and Peace, imagine putting it through a paper shredder and then being asked to put it all back together again. Um, only having to do that, say, with something on the volume of, say, the Encyclopedia Britannica. It, it's an immense task. It seems unlikely that we will ever be able to clone a dinosaur. Yet amber remains priceless as an archive of ancient life. Without it, these fragile creatures would never have been preserved. And each is a vital clue to the greatest mystery of all, the secret of life itself.